All right, so now that you have your global ocean basins map taped into your notebook, uh, let's take a look at it. Um, the blue line here, uh, blue on my screen, but not on your, your photocopy, is the equator. Uh, we've got continents in gray and oceans in white. Um, the bold are the names of the ocean basins. And then there are all these little gray lines, which are the major ocean currents. So we have the locations noted, but you can also see that we the direction isn't specified. So which way is each of these currents flowing? Um, and we also have the name of the current, just so you, you know. So our task is to um, add red or blue arrows to each of these currents um, in order to, one, specify the direction of flow, and two, specify the relative temperature. So how are we going to do that? Um, I'm going to walk through doing that for the Gulf Stream here um, as an example, and then your job will be to complete the map, um, all of the other gray lines. So the first question um, is what direction is it going? And the way we figure this out is um, to notice that the current is curving a little bit, which should hopefully make you start to think about the Coriolis effect. So for global winds, we were talking about how the Coriolis effect affects um, the direction of the curvature. And it does exactly the same thing for currents as it does for um, global winds. So depending on which way you look at this line, it's either curving to the right if we go in that direction, or it's curving to the left if we go in that direction. So how do we know which is correct? Well, we are in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, so what's the rule for the Northern Hemisphere? Um, in the North, currents, uh, global winds, they all curve to the right, which means that this current must be starting down here in the South, and moving towards the north. So now I need to choose what color I'm gonna draw that arrow. Should it be red or should it be blue? But first let's, let's do this. So note the hemisphere to determine direction. Okay, and then, so in order to figure out the temperature, now that we know the direction on the Gulf Stream, it's starting in the south and moving to the north, um, ask yourself, is it coming from warm water or cold water? So if it's coming from the south, hopefully you realize that that means it's coming from closer to the equator, which we know is the warmest spot on the globe. So this must be starting in a warmer place and ending in a cooler place. So if I'm gonna draw my arrow, I'm gonna choose red because this is warm water moving to the north. So I'm just gonna draw over this and add a red arrow. So there you go. I have now noted that the Gulf Stream moves from south to north and it is a warm water current. This is why um, going to the beach on the East Coast is uh, pleasant because the water is warm. So I cut off that video too quickly. I wanted to continue on and show you um, how to think about the rest of this uh, current system in the North Atlantic. So we know that we have warm water moving up from the south to the north. Hopefully you see that all of these other currents in the North Atlantic have to be working in the same um, direction. So now we just need to think about temperature. So if the Gulf Stream is bringing warm water up towards the North Atlantic here, um, this bit of the current will hold on to some of that heat, but it's losing it, right? Now we're up farther north, um, away from the source of heat, so eventually it cools. So this uh, west-east current here has um, a changing temperature. So now take that information and um, look at the canary current, which is coming down from the north to the south, which means that it's going to start with cooler water, bringing that down to the south, uh, which feeds the first part of this current, the uh, north equatorial current, with cool water. 
which then eventually absorbs the heat um, from being down here near the equator and warms it back up again. So there you go. That is a full cycle. Um, your job is to look at the one, two, three, four additional cycles um, and uh, label them appropriately. Um, be careful when you are working in the Southern Hemisphere. Remember the rule for curvature is to the left.